Once I was down in sin's dark prison, no one around could take my blame. I had no hope, no cause for living. Then Jesus came, he broke the chains, he broke the chains. a cold dark prison and all the world death seemed to reign but Mary cried my Lord is risen from death he came he broke the chains he broke the chains of fear and sorrow the chains of sin and shame. He wrote my name way up in glory. Since Jesus came, he broke the chains. Since Jesus came, he broke my chains. I want to say I thank the Lord for saving me and for all that he's done for me. Oh, yeah. I grew up in Sunday school. I memorized the golden rule and how Jesus came to set the sinner free. I know the story inside out and I can tell you all about the path that led him up to Calvary, but ask me why he loves me, and I don't know what to say, but I'll never be the same, because he changed my life when he became everything to me. He's more than a story, more than words on a page of history. He's the air that I breathe. He's the water I thirst for and the ground beneath my feet. Oh, he's everything, everything to me. We're living in uncertain times and more and more I find that I'm aware of just how fragile life can be. I want to tell the world I found a love that turned my life around. They need to know that they can taste and see. Now every day I'm praying just to give my heart away. I want to live for Jesus so that someone else might see that he is everything to me. He's more than a story, more than words on a page of history. He's the air that I breathe. He's the water I thirst for and the ground beneath my feet. Oh, he's everything, everything to me.
Dale told me that um, when we'd come in late, sometimes he could tell by looking at my face that we'd been caught in traffic because it showed all over my face. And tonight as we started in, there was a wreck that hindered us. And all I could think about was uh, it was going to make us late again. And I didn't even think at the time I was sitting on the pew and I said, thank you, Lord, that we wasn't in that wreck. I didn't thank him at that time because all I could think of was we were going to be late again. And You know, sometimes we don't see the blessings ahead of us. or We take a lot of things for granted. What do you want to say, honey? <laughs> How about that? It's a privilege to stand and sing for the Lord. As we travel through the desert, storms beset us on our way. But beyond the river Jordan lies a
The Lord has been so good to me. I feel like traveling on until that blessed home I see. I feel like traveling on. Oh, yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. I don't think you know how good he's been to you. Amen. We really don't have no idea how good the Lord's been to us. Amen. You have no idea like she said. Amen. I'm going to sing that verse again in a minute. We done sung it three times. I'm going to sing it again. Amen. I, you don't have no idea how many times somebody else has suffered so you could go free. You don't know how many times, amen, going around the curve, God has moved something out of the way so you could go free. This past week, we traveled about 1,400 miles up and down the road. I was coming home on Friday night, late, late up in the night. Amen. Looking down that highway, all that traffic, I thought, Lord, how many, how many cars have you moved out of the way so I can make it to church on time? A couple of nights I was late. Amen. It really didn't matter. We made it. The Lord helped us. The Lord's been good to us. Amen. I'm not at the funeral home tonight, standing to the head of a casket of a loved one. The Lord's been good to me. Amen. If time lasts, we'll be, amen, sorrow will change sides of the road. We'll be down there at the, at the cemetery, one of these years, amen, crying more tears, but tonight we're here, the Lord's been good to us, amen, sometimes the enemy, brother Homer, he comes in like a flood, but praise the Lord, the Lord has been good to me, I feel like traveling on, amen, I said I feel like traveling on, we're almost there, I believe heaven is just about in view, I can almost see the lights of that city, I feel like traveling on, amen, what are you going to turn back to, amen, ain't nothing back there but sorrow. I know it gets hard. I know the way gets steep. But I feel like traveling on. The Lord has been so good to me. I feel like traveling on. Has he been good to you? I said, amen. You said you sound like a broke record. You need to realize, God, if it had not been for him, amen, where would we be tonight? You could be in hell, but the Lord has went overboard to be good to you. Thank you, Jesus. If he's been good to you, let's sing it one more time. The Lord has been so good to me, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair, I feel like traveling on. Oh yes, I feel like traveling on. On, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Stay on your feet tonight. Proverbs chapter number 26. Proverbs chapter number 26. We desire your prayers tonight. The Lord would help us. Let's help our lungs and just give us what that you need tonight. Amen. I feel like that we're in a time. There was a preacher text me this afternoon, and this was the text message. He said, I've never seen such a time that we live in. Even all the elders in the church are being faced with such struggles. Struggles. I remember a time when I was a young man, and I don't feel like I'm all that old, but my body's telling me I'm not getting no younger. But there was people that you could go to and ask advice, and, and it's almost like they was just solid, and they was there. But now you look at them, and they're struggling too. The Bible said in the book of Daniel, the devil is trying to wire out the saints. If he can get us to quit, church, He's got the whole world. If he can get you to quit, he's got your family. If he can get me to quit, then I've got a grandbaby and two boys that's looking at me. Ethan and Kayla and Kendra may make it, 
But there's a big possibility them babies is going to follow me wherever I go. Lord, help us. Amen. Randy, one more curve, and I believe we're almost there. Amen. We're almost there. 26 of Proverbs. One verse. Please pray for me tonight that the Lord will help us. Verse number 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tailbearer, the strife ceaseth. That's all that I'll read tonight. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. I want to preach tonight just a few moments. If the Lord will help us on don't let the fire go out. Amen. Don't let the fire go out. Amen. I said don't let the fire go out. Amen. I was thinking as I was coming to church this morning and the Lord spoke this to me and I didn't think I'd be preaching on it, but I told it to my wife. I said, I don't feel like the devil in himself can put my fire out but I feel like me and myself can let it go out. Amen. Amen. I want to say tonight, fire has to have fuel to be able to keep burning. And uh, and tonight, they, my dad, and I'm just going to follow the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, my dad, he never has had a woodshed. And uh, all my life, we just piled it up, covered it up. In the last 10 years, I guess, he's TP'd it up. And uh, I mean, he takes a lot of time to work on them uh, TP's. And it, the, the water will run down it just like we're running off of a off of a building roof and uh, whenever that winter time comes you can dig back in there and uh, it's just as dry as it was if it had been in a woodshed and and uh, these people that stopped literally uh, in his driveway before and him out there working amen this is what they said I was a wondering and I mean they meant it I wondered when you was going to have a bonfire and why you've got so much wood piled up and of course he'd laugh at them and he'd tell them the story amen but in their mind it was going to be a great big fire because he had a lot of wood. Amen. But can I say it's going to take the fire and it's going to take us to keep the wood put on it. Amen. I believe when God saved us down on the inside of me, God lit a fire. Amen. I said God lit a fire down on the inside of me. When I got up off of that altar that night, amen, the way I felt, I've, I've never felt so clean and so pure in my life. God put a desire in my Amen. To read his word and get out on my knees and come to the house of the Lord. Uh, can I say you'll never make it? And that's what I tell all young converts. You cannot make it except you stay in the house of the Lord. Amen. Coming out from among the world and reading the Bible and talking to him uh, down on your knees. Amen. That's what you continually uh, laying the wood in the fireplace for. Amen. Right across the road. Uh, Kayla and Ethan's got a chimney. Uh, coming out the top of their roof. Amen. I can look over there, Brother Joe, and smoke are coming up and it'd be 80 degrees in their living room. Uh, but I cannot depend on uh, the fire at their house. Amen. To keep my family from freezing to death. I've got to go, the Bible said, uh, work out your own soul salvation uh, with fear and trembling. I believe with all of my heart. Amen. He said faith without works is dead. It's going to take more than just faith. You're going to have to work at this thing. Amen. Bust the firewood spiritually. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. It's going to take a godly lifestyle. Amen. If you're going to have fire when it gets cold over at your house. Amen. Here in Beth Eden Baptist Church. If we're going to see the fire fall. Amen. You're going to have to do more than put a stick on it on Sunday morning. You've got to keep her laid on there. Amen. Somebody said the devil ain't going to put my fire out. Most of us just let it go out. If we'll keep the firewood a pile on it, the bigger the fire gets, the harder it is to put out. Amen. The more warmth that the world can see. If we'll do more than have a gnat smoke and know that we want it big, we want the world to know that we are on fire. I want to say it can happen, but you have to put the wood on your own fire. Amen. I appreciate the Sunday. Sunday school lessons. Appreciate them. But it's going to take more than that. I got to have my own lifestyle. Y'all talk back to me here. Amen. <laughs> Bless his name. I want to have a good sharp saw. A good sharp go devil. Amen. I still like to bust wood myself. 
And if it don't bust, I'll throw it over the side and get the wood splitter. <laughs> Amen. But somebody said, you get warm twice over working up firewood. Get out there in the hot sun. Amen. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about me. When I was a boy, my daddy worked over here at Daco. Had two weeks of vacation a year. And he took us on vacation one time. Took us to Charleston. Went down there and got out of the car. Walked down to the edge of the ocean. Looked out there and said, wow, that thing's big. Look at all them rocks. Don't you get around that water. Hey, things in there will eat you, boy. Hey, Amen. Get back in the car. Let's go back to the hills. Hey, Amen. We went all the way down there and all the way back and my mama packed a suitcase with my daddy amen he unhooked the air conditioner and all our vehicles he said that costs too much gas to run that thing if you're hot roll the window down amen that's what he said amen and so we went to Charleston he put the belt back on we never had been around air conditioner in our life and so the air conditioner come on my sister got sick good excuse to come back to the house so we come all the way back to the house so you know what we done for two weeks of vacation What are we going to do on vacation this year? We're going to cut firewood. You don't know how to appreciate a good farm until you've wheelbarred the wood a half a mile. Hey Amen. We expect to come in the church house, ease in, throw all the world aside for about an hour and a half, leave it in the car. Most of the time we don't leave it in the car. We stick it in our pocket. Somebody said, I turn it off. Why carry the thing? If you're going to turn it off, why carry the thing? Amen. You carry a gun? I do. Amen. Is it loaded? Why carry the thing? I can't beat nobody to death with it. I'd rather have a stick as a gun with no bullets in it. Come on, talk to me. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. We'll lay it in the car, come in here, and say, boy, that's a dead meat. You know why? It's because you ain't been a pushing a wheel bar. Amen. You ain't got no wood to put on the fire. You expect the preacher, amen, to do it all. The preacher can't do it all. I've got to concentrate on my house and feed you what God gives me. me. But if you're going to have a fire at your house, you're going to have to cut your own wood. You're going to have to live a lifestyle for yourself. And if the closer we get to him, amen, the more the world can see the fire uh, shining out of it. Hey, if God's in there, Homer, the lights will be on. The world will know there's somebody in there. You'll be different than who you used to be. Hallelujah. And you'll appreciate it when it gets cold when there's a fire burning at your house. Amen. We'd go over across the mountain, over at the ranger station, and then back in, you could get a wood permit. I'm so sure you still could. For about $35, you could go in there and get a wood permit for three cord. He'd go down there and get that. We'd go back up there to Yellow Gap. And we'd ease back out that road, and all the easy stuff would done be gone. You heard what my wife said. We all want it to be easier than what it really is. We're spoilt, and ain't nothing wrong with a heat pump. I got one of them too. But when it comes to spiritual stuff, everybody's fire has got to be worked out the same way. Here's what we want to do. Amen. Spiritual, oops, tore it up. Spiritual, we want to go turn the heat up. It wasn't hooked up anyway. Don't worry about it. Just for looks. We'll go turn the heat up, go sit back down in the chair and say, man, it's cold in here. Hey, honey, turn that up. We'll go over and push two or three buttons on the wall. Hey, man, but I remember what my daddy used to say. He'd say, man, when it come wintertime, we support. We didn't have no matches. We had to go to the neighbors in Barry Farm. So before we went to bed at night, we always covered the coals up so we could go stir them in the morning and lay some wood on there. I'm not telling you you're always going to be on top of the mountain, but I'm encouraging you tonight, don't let the fire go out. Oh, the world needs us, church. I said the world needs us. Amen. The enemy's got the fire hose the hell out. Amen. But if you'll keep a laying the wood on there, thank God it'll still burn. I said it'll still burn. Amen. But don't you let it go out. Don't you let it go out. On Monday, read your Bible. On Tuesday, read your Bible. On Wednesday, read your Bible. Come in the house of the Lord with thanksgiving on your bread. Amen. I know we have struggles, but God's been good to us. And don't let the devil, amen, have a chance to put the fire out. Amen. Keep on putting the wood on it, and he'll not be able to put it out. We go out Yellow Gap Road. I know this is simple, but you need to hear me. Amen. Don't let it go out. 
I got a fire at my house right now. I don't need many matches. Say amen, honey. I don't need many matches because when I build a fire, I keep a fire. Amen. When I put, when I start building a fire, there'll be a fire. I don't need but one match. I learned that from Howard Wheeler. It's 100 degrees in here. Open the door. You pull in the end of Wheeler Hill Road, and it's 20 degrees outside, and his front door's open. The first words I hear my wife and my daughter say, oh, no. You walk in there, and the ceiling fan's turning, and it ain't even on. I promise you, amen, him laying over in the corner, and this is what he used to say, I know it's hot, but your mama freezes, and I'm going to keep her far. I know the world may say we're crazy, but I've got babies, so I plan on keep laying the wood on there. Hey, Brother Joe, the world says you're crazy for living like you live. You're crazy, for, amen, for going to church all the time. Amen, you Jesus fanatic, call me what you want to. Amen, but I've got a family that I want to say warm, amen. You can complain. I've had people call me all kinds of stuff. Amen, but I'll tell you one thing, Homer. Ain't nothing like having a fire when it gets cold outside. Amen. Amen, so come on over to my house. Amen. Well, he walked in my house today. Kayla's expecting y'all know. I'm going to be Papa again. But so right now she free, burns up all the time. Am I right? Burns up all the time. So he walked in my house today, Patricia, and he said, oh. My wife has froze me to death. So tonight he come in with a coat on. He's ready now. Kayla's standing in the choir doing this. Her husband at the piano with a coat on. So if you ain't real careful, we'll say, don't you think you're going a little bit too far with this? I mean, it's okay to come, don't be on dope, but let's don't get too carried away here. Let's don't get too religious. Why are you doing laying all that stuff down? You know why they say that? Because it makes them look bad. They're condemned. Amen. Hey, but I want more wood in my life because it's going to get cold again. I said it's going to get cold again. Hey, man, you may be on top of the world and they say I don't need God, but you will. Hey, man, we better get to chopping wood. Don't let it go out. Don't let it go out. Keep the fire going. Hey, man. Hey, man, don't let somebody say you're crazy. Hey, man, you don't need to be doing that. Hey, man, if you don't like being hot, don't come to my house because I'm going to keep a fire. How I many of you can say that's exactly the way I plan on being spiritually? It don't matter what my family says. I'm in it for myself and my family, and I want a fire to be running. At, at my house, amen. Coming up old Iceville Highway, I'm just giving you stuff as it just comes in my brain. Right there before you get to hot spot, there's a place on the right there that sells them outdoor chimneys. Them fancy things you set up out in the yard. So they've got one on display up next to the road. And they got some little old things in, in a bunch of them inside of one of them about that tall. And it's fake fire. So when you get up close to it, if you don't know what to look for, you'll think there's a fire built inside of that thing, and it's fake. You can stand there. I've got one of them things in my camper. You flip a switch. There's a little old thing turns in the back. It's got pieces of paper on it with a piece of, with a light behind it. It looks just like a fire. You go down there to the funeral home. They've got a big TV screen and a picture of a fireplace. And I've heard somebody say, I can almost feel the heat because it looks so real. But yet the glass is so cold. But you get around where the fire's at. Oh, yeah. Oh, bless his name. You want to get up close to it when it's cold. <laughs> last night we had a good one going. Kayla was cold last night. You know how that kind of stuff goes. She just snuggled up right to it and said, this feels so good. So keep the fire going. Keep the fire going. My daddy would always pick a tree out about 200 yards on the lower side of the road. And on, on that little old permit, it says no motorized vehicles off the state right away. So in the back of the back of the truck, we had a wheel bar. And a teenage boy, that was me. He'd go lay the saw in that thing. The thing would hit the ground. I mean, you couldn't even see him. 
from the highway. And he'd say, come on down here. We'd blaze us a path. We'd wheelbar that stuff up out of there and bust it down there in the woods with a go devil and wheelbar it out. You say, that's crazy. I'd have got me a heat pipe. No. Because for two straight weeks, that's what we did. And when the snow would go to flying and the power would go out everywhere else, and they'd start mashing that button on the wall, they'd start calling them that had smoke. Can I come over to your house? Because I know you've got a fire. So it don't make no difference what everybody else does in their Sunday school classes. You keep the fire built for my boys. Because there'll be a day that the world's going to say, I don't know what to do, and they're going to start looking for Christians that's got the fire built in their life. Hey, they're going to come a time, you mark my word, that they're going to come in the back of the church looking for something because they've tried all this other stuff and it's, it's cold. It's got a look to it, but it's cold. Amen. When things happen in their life and things is turned upside down, they're going to need something that's real and they're going to need a church that's got some power. Amen. And I'm not in this to fit in with the rest of the world. I'm in this for the fire. I'm in this for the power. And I want them to be, when they walk in the back of the building, I've heard people say, say, hey amen, I felt God when I pulled in the parking lot. You know why? Somebody has been putting wood on the fire and where there is no wood, the fire goes out. So help us never to let the fire go out in our house. Amen. What's your wood pile look like? Spiritually, I'm talking about, come on, you know what I'm talking about. Shane Riddle, Tom's boy, while he begins to play. Last year, this is what he said about my daddy. He said, your daddy may die from a lot of things, but he will not freeze to death because of the wood piles in his yard. The devil may kill you in a lot of ways, but will he kill your praise? He inhabits the praise. What's somebody going to think? Who cares? Who cares, Homer? 28 and a half years of where you was, you shouldn't let me, it shouldn't matter who's around you. Somebody talks about being set free from sin, them hands ought to go right straight up in the air because of what the Lord done for you. The car accidents you've been in, somebody had wood on the fire. Somebody had a fire going at their house. Or you'd be in hell right now. So don't let the fire go out. The devil's trying to put my fire out. Join every other Christian in the world. If you're a Christian, he's trying to put your fire out. But the smaller it gets, Kimmy, the easier it'll be for him to do. Keep putting the wood on it. Keep praying. Keep fasting. I don't see no evidence. Keep swinging the go devil. Keep pulling a lever on the wood splitter, whatever it is you do. Keep your chainsaw sharp. Keep a pile in the wood up. It's going to get cold again. I've seen my daddy many times because of slothfulness at somebody else's house. And I'm saying this bragging on him and my mom. Slothfulness over yonder. I've seen him pile wood on the back of a truck and take it over to keep him warm because they were slothful. But can I tell you something? I can do everything in my power to try to help you. But in this walk, you're going to have to have wood over at your house if you're going to stay warm. You can't hold on to my britches leg and expect for me to drag you through judgment and him say you're okay. You're going to have to have a fire for yourself. Why don't we all stand to our feet tonight? You say, preacher, I'll be honest. My zeal ain't where it used to be. And I, I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, you hear my voice, it's just like a broke record all the time. It's the same voice, same voice. Even though it's what somebody else may preach and you get more out of it, it's the same thing. It's just the 